The screen fades onto a video of the Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Eleanor Roosevelt grave site. A tomb monument rests in the middle of a small grassy field, lined by a hedge wall. The monument is made of white marble and shaped like a rectangular prism. The marble monument's dimensions are 8 feet long, 4 feet wide, and 3 feet high, with a base that reaches out an additional 2 feet around the tomb. An inscription on the front face reads, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, 1882-1945, Anna Eleanor Roosevelt, 1884-1962. Two body-length patches of darker grass in front of the monument denote FDR and Eleanor's graves. A small flag of the United States of America, USA, flutters at the head of FDR's grave. The blue sky is covered with scattered cumulus clouds which move quickly towards the foreground, as in a time-lapse video. The National Park Service, NPS, logo fades into view above the grave. It is a white variation of a large arrowhead. Inside the white arrowhead, the sky is visible through artwork of a monochromatic bison, sequoia tree, and mountain. Underneath the grave, white words fade into view which state, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, 142nd Birthday Commemoration. A closer photograph of the tomb monument at an angle from the right side. A stone sundial stand is visible behind the tomb. Individual long-stemmed white, red, and yellow flowers adorn a portion of FDR's grave. To the left of the monument is a plastic translucent podium with an NPS logo on the front and microphone on the top. A black bar slowly fades onto the left side of the screen. It occupies about one-sixth of the screen. A white NPS logo appears at the top of the black bar. This black space and logo will remain throughout the entire video. A video of a woman behind the podium appears under the NPS logo inside the black bar. The video of her is in black and white. The right side of the screen remains in color, where event photography and videos will be shown. The lady has her hair neatly tied behind her head, and she wears large glasses. Her arms are raised slightly at her elbows, with hands cupped upwards to the sky. She wears priestly robes and a liturgical stole. She is Reverend Meredith Sanderson, and she delivers the invocation. We remember before you today Franklin Delano Roosevelt, born this day 142 years ago. In his life of public service, and in his faith in you, in this country, and in its people, he became for us an icon of hope. A photograph of the audience of notable visitors. They are sitting in two rows of white folding chairs on the grassy area in front of the grave. A park ranger can be seen behind the podium. Amongst the visitors, a teenager with long brown hair stands up. She wears a black fur-lined coat with large furry patches on the shoulders. She is Miss Grace Roosevelt, the great-great-granddaughter of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. Behind her, a line of ceremonial wreaths is displayed. The United States Military Academy Honor Guard stands behind the wreaths. That through selfless cooperation, we may better share your dream for us. Through lives of faithful integrity, we may have the courage to face every challenge. And that through the pursuit of true justice, we may in our time find your peace. 
A photograph of the Master of Ceremonies and Supervisory Park Ranger, Mrs. Francesca McSally Urban, standing behind the podium. She has shoulder-length gray hair underneath a light brown, wide-brimmed hat. She wears glasses and a green jacket with darker green pants. To her right, a bit of the tomb is visible, and behind it, ten military academy cadets stand at attention in ceremonial uniform. Five cadets in the front hold sabers directed towards the ground. Two cadets in the back hold rifles across their shoulders. Three cadets hold large flags on poles. The USA flag, the flag of the United States Army, and the flag of the U.S. Corps of Cadets. With her saber lowered, one additional cadet, acting as the unit leader, stands in front of the other ten members. On this day, God, we ask your blessing for ourselves and for all public servants and elected leaders, that you would grant to us the authority, the wisdom, and the strength to pursue your good dream for us. A close-up photograph of the cadets, both male and female, standing at attention. They wear their dress gray uniforms for ceremonies with gray jackets and trousers. The jacket has 21 gold buttons on the chest and two on the collar. The cadets each wear a burgundy-colored belt sash and have either one or two white sashes clasped across their chest by a gold buckle. Each member has white gloves and a shako hat upon their head. This shako hat is also called a tar bucket because it is jet black and looks like an overturned bucket. The hat has a visor with golden cord lacing the top. A golden United States Military Academy insignia adorns the front of the cap. The front row of cadets has chin straps and larger plumes on the front of their hats with black and iridescent feathers. The back row of cadets has black pom-poms on their hats instead of plumes. Each cadet has bars embroidered on their jacket arms, identifying their enlisted rank. We remember President Roosevelt, give us a love of truth and justice, and make us mindful of our calling to serve all your people for the love and the honor of your name. A close-up photograph of the Military Academy Honor Guard. Six members stand at attention in a row while holding the muzzle and barrel of their rifles with silvery cloth gloves. They wear long, dark blue overcoats and the ceremonial blue and gold army belt. The collar of an off-white wool shirt can be seen around the neck of the Honor Guard members, and each person wears a service blue cap with gold trim near the brim and visor. The golden U.S. coat of arms is centered on the front of the cap. Their enlisted rank is embroidered on each overcoat arm. Behind this line of soldiers, the staff sergeant in charge of the honor guard stands. He is wearing the same uniform. On behalf of the United States Military Academy at West Point and the United States Army. A video of a new figure in black and white appears in the black bar on the left side of the screen. A tall man wearing glasses and an Army service uniform stands behind the podium. Under the lapel of his coat are many patches and pins denoting notable service accomplishments. He wears an Army service cap, and a star on his shoulder signifies his rank. He is Brigadier General Shane Reeves, Dean of the Academic Board for the United States Military Academy, and he says a few words in honor of FDR. Thank you for this opportunity to honor the life and legacy of President Franklin Roosevelt. President Roosevelt's contributions to the United States and the world are immeasurable. A photograph of Commander Michael Athenus, standing in front of the wreaths. He salutes towards the grave of FDR. He is wearing the blue dress uniform of the U.S. Army with white gloves. His Army garrison cap has a patch of the face of the Statue of Liberty and includes the American Legion insignia. He has white and gray hair under his cap and wears black tinted glasses. 
His American Legion Post number and location are on his cap. American Legion Post number 1303, Hyde Park, New York. His, lead, his leadership during the Great Dem, uh, Depression demonstrated courage, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to the well-being of the American people. His strategic vision, diplomatic skill, and resolute spirit during World War II played a pivotal role in the Allied victory. A photograph of Commander Colin Riley carrying a colorful USA-themed wreath made of red and white flowers. He wears a black parka and beige khaki pants with short gray hair underneath a blue army garrison cap. He wears glasses and has a mustache and beard trimmed short. He represents the American Legion John Livingston Post, number 1466. He'll always be remembered as one of our greatest presidents and, and a person and a man who led the American people during a period of immense challenges and difficulties. A photograph of Martin Hawkhauser placing a smooth stone on the marble grave monument of FDR and Eleanor. This is a Jewish tradition paying homage to the dead. Martin is the chief of staff of the Jewish war veterans at the private Herman Siegel Post number 625 of Poughkeepsie, New York. He has white hair underneath an army garrison cap emblazoned with the American Legion symbol. He wears glasses, a dark blue fur-lined parka, and a light blue dress shirt. A video of a new figure in black and white appears in the black bar on the left side of the screen. He is of average height and wears a formal suit with dress shirt and tie. He wears a yarmulke on top of brownish gray wavy hair. He has a shortly trimmed gray beard and holds the microphone as he stands behind the podium. This is Rabbi Joshua Bodiger, the great grandson of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. He speaks about his father's memories of FDR. I want to offer just a few brief notes. I think we're, we're, we're so aware, and it bears repeating, of, of, of the, the historic accomplishments which are, which are dizzying. A photograph of Mrs. Manuela Roosevelt placing the Roosevelt family wreath on a stand. She has dark brown highlighted hair that reaches below her shoulders. She wears a knit dark orange coat with a brown fur-lined collar and cuffs. The wreath is comprised of green leaves and various types of red and white flowers with a bright red ribbon. The National Park Service wreath is also noticeable with orange and yellow flowers, green leaves, and a red ribbon. But I want to just hold up three sort of character traits, in a sense, what we would call in the Jewish tradition, midot or, or precepts. Uh, and so a lot of uh, my, you know, a photograph of 12 decorative wreaths resting on stands. Each is abundantly covered in colorful flowers, which are mostly a combination of red, white, and blue in hue. Each wreath has a ribbon, and ribbon colors are patriotic as well. What I know directly of, of FDR's teaching and life comes from uh, my brother, Paul and I, our, our father John is a, is a grandson um, of FDR and Eleanor, and so some of these, these personal accounts are what we, we grew up hearing. A photograph of Brigadier General Shane Reeves presenting the presidential wreath at the ceremony on behalf of President Joe Biden. The wreath is larger than the others and is comprised of red, white, and blue flowers on a green leaf base with a red, white, and blue ribbon. So the, uh, my dad, our dad, grew up riding his bike. He lived for a time with his mother, uh, Anna, in the White House, and he grew up riding his bike, learning to ride his bike in the same driveway where FDR learned to kind of walk, you know, again. A photograph of the two military academy musicians from the West Point Band standing at attention. 
Both soldiers wear long dark blue overcoats with four silver buttons. They wear silver gloves and a portion of their royal blue dress pants are visible under their coats. The outside of each pant leg has a single silver stripe running down the length and the soldier's black dress shoes are neatly polished. Both soldiers wear dark blue band jackets under their coats and their overcoats have their enlisted rank embroidered on the arms. Their dark blue service caps have visors and a silver stripe above the brim. The musician on the left holds a silver trumpet in his hands. The musician on the right wears glasses and has a large black drum at his waist that is strapped across his chest. This second musician holds two drumsticks in his hands. And so there's, there's sort of powerful overlaps that our dad shares from that time. And one of the things that he always holds up as a grandson, right, of, uh, of, of President Roosevelt was uh, his irrepressible joy and humor, even in tremendously trying times. A photograph of the Military Academy Honor Guard holding their rifles in preparation for the three-volley salute to FDR. The staff sergeant stands behind them, ready to give the order to fire. My daughter, Paloma, who's 12, never tires of hearing the story, which I know a lot of us know, of um, FDR mistakenly walking in on Churchill after I think Churchill was getting out of the shower and apologizing and Churchill saying, the Prime Minister of England has nothing to hide from the President of the United States. <laughs> A close-up photograph of a woven basket containing yellow and white long-stemmed flowers. The handle of the basket is gripped by Miss Grace Roosevelt, who kneels and places a handful of white flowers on the grave of FDR. And, uh, and so that's her face. She, she has a handful of favorite, favorite FDR stories, including... Uh, I think this is one that, that all of the grandchildren report in different, to, in kind of different versions of this, the throwing of the Thanksgiving turkey drumstick down the table. A photograph of a woman kneeling before the grave of FDR to lay a red flower. A line of people is gathering behind the woman to pay respects. The grave already has many yellow, red, and white flowers resting on it. The corner of the marble tomb is visible in this photo, and the image orientation is low. Thus, no faces are seen. A few yellow and white flowers lie on Eleanor's grave. Um, our dad in particular, he went, when he grew up, he, his, he, he wanted more than anything to be a, a, a secret service, to work for the secret service, because those were his closest friends in childhood. And he remembers how FDR would sometimes work with him to, to lose the Secret Service. They would come into the elevator in the White House and close the door behind them so that they could ride the elevator up and down. A silent video begins in which a procession of community visitors slowly walks around the gravesite to lay flowers at FDR's grave. The foreground displays people of various ages and ethnicities dressed in winter attire walking along the edge of the small field closest to the camera. Behind these visitors, the white folding chairs that sit in the middle ground are facing the tomb. The people who presented the wreaths earlier or gave speeches are sitting in the white folding chairs. After visitors pick up flowers off screen, they return on screen in between the chairs and tomb to lay flowers on the graves. The cadets stand behind the tomb, and park ranger Francesca stands at the podium. Above them is a large, mildly overcast sky that periodically lets through waves of light. FDR savored stories, probably his own more than others. He had a wonderful grin. He would throw back his head and laugh. Uh, he would say, I love it. That was his, his favorite expression, according to my dad. 
He loved to talk. Of course, he had a natural eloquence. In his office, one couldn't get a word in edgewise, right? If you, uh, if you were having lunch, you had to wait until his mouth was full to make your request. And because you left his presence with such a warm and fuzzy feeling, you never knew if what you came in to request was actually granted or not. You would leave feeling good, but you're not sure you got what you wanted. So his, 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 this, this joy and humor, this buoyancy, um, which perhaps is, which I, I would say definitely is connected to the faith that we, that we have and spoke about at the beginning. His, I, I want to also hold up FDR's pragmatism um, against, uh, I, I think he, he, he didn't speak um, the way I read it in a language of like a static ideology, right? Like he, he was interested in what worked. Now he was interested in what would help uh, this country work again. The last piece, uh, he had a true focus on the people, you know, and it's not a false populism. What I would say, some we get so much false populism today. Um, I think FDR was truly committed to what he what was called at the time the forgotten man, you know, having government programs built from the bottom up rather than from the top down. The video transitions to a closer side view of the visitors in winter attire placing flowers on the grave. The faces of the guests are more noticeable as they walk towards the camera and then towards the right side of the frame. Some people appear contemplative, while others seem emotional. And when World War II broke out, the New Deal was still unfinished. Like there had been much that had been made possible. But it's up to us, in so many respects, uh, to finish it. Not just to check the, the literal unchecked boxes of FDR's administration's list, but to take the spirit of the New Deal and give that spirit flesh in a way that speaks to the, the needs and realities of our time. The video transitions back to the silent view behind the honored guests in the white chairs with the grave site centered in the mid-ground. Reverend Meredith Sanderson walks to the podium and all visitors stand up to honor FDR during the benediction. However, we continue to hear Rabbi Bodiger's remarks. We could go on and on, but uh, one last thing, as we come into another election cycle, seemingly endless election cycle, if we're ever indeed out election cycles, it strikes me that FDR might say, we can't be cynical, you know, or at least we can't merge with our cynicism. We don't have the, the luxury of cynicism about what government can do in its best and most hopeful manifestations. To continue to believe in that, we have to dream big about what might be possible and actually give shape and language to what that would look like and not let a politics of despair um, uh, dominate you know, both our critical and our creative faculties. A close-up photograph of the marble tomb of FDR and Eleanor. The grassy grave of FDR in front of the tomb is now fully covered with flowers from the community organized in a row. A small, smooth visitation stone rests on the front right edge of the monument. So I want to close with a passage from a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow that our father remembers hanging on the wall of, uh, of their home as a child um, that, that was meaningful to FDR. Sail on, O ship of state. Sail on, O union, strong and great. Humanity, with all its fears, with all the hopes for future years, hangs breathless on thy fate. Thank you. The video of Rabbi Bodiger fades away. The black bar and MPS logo on the left edge of the screen completely fade away as well. As drums play, the screen is now filled with a video of the West Point Honor Guard in the foreground, being ordered to shoulder their rifles and march single file from the graveside event. Behind them in the background, 
The West Point cadets in gray uniforms are already marching single file down a gravel path. A glass greenhouse is behind the gravel path. As the honor guard joins behind the cadets in gray, the view slowly zooms in on the leaders of the cadet line. The view begins to grow blurry as the cadets exit through an opening in the hedge that lines the small field of the gravesite. The image fades to black. National Park Service logo appears on screen and underneath it the title also appears, stating Franklin Delano Roosevelt 142nd Birthday Commemoration. The credits for the video begin and read as follows. Administered on January 30th, 2024 by the National Park Service, home of Franklin D. Roosevelt, Hyde Park, New York. In conjunction with the United States Military Academy, West Point, New York, and the Franklin D. Roosevelt Public Library and Museum, Hyde Park, New York. Speakers in order of appearance at event. Mr. Alan Daly, Supervisory Park Ranger speaking on behalf of Amy Bracewell, Superintendent of the home of Franklin D. Roosevelt, Hyde Park, New York. Mrs. Francesca McSally Urban, Supervisory Park Ranger and Master of Ceremonies. Reverend Meredith Sanderson, Rector of St. James Episcopal Church, Hyde Park, New York. Brigadier General Shane Reeves, Dean of the Academic Board, United States Military Academy, West Point, New York. Rabbi Joshua Bodiger, great-grandson of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. Wreath Presentations Town of Hyde Park, presented by Al Torrigiani, Hyde Park Historical Society, presented by Gary Calcagni, Roger Kolp, and Carney Reinbald. Hyde Park Chamber of Commerce, presented by Dot Shinovert, the American Legion Post number 1303, presented by Commander Michael Athenas. American Legion John Livingston Post number 1466, presented by Commander Colin Riley. The Jewish War Veterans, presented by Past Commander Ralph Schwartz and Chief of Staff Martin Hawkhauser. The Eleanor Roosevelt Val Kill Partnership, presented by Donna Lackner Horn. The FDR Presidential Library, presented by William Harris. The Eleanor Roosevelt Center at Valkill, presented by Samantha Shapley and Angelina Giordani. The National Park Service, presented by Alan Daly on behalf of Amy Bracewell. The Roosevelt Family Wreath, presented by Manuela Roosevelt. The Presidential Wreath, presented by Brigadier General Shane Reeves. Special thanks to the United States Military Academy cadets, honor guard, and musicians, and Miss Grace Roosevelt, the great-great-granddaughter of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. Also special thanks to the visitors, viewers, and listeners of the home of FDR and all NPS site content. Video and audio by me, Carl Sumner Anderson III. Copyright, the National Park Service, 2024.